Pinch, punch, first of the month and all that, yesterday was April Fools. And that meant that we got a classic Mojang snapshot. A snapshot that is nothing more than a silly joke. Although if you ask me, yesterday's snapshot was pretty glorious. It was filled with over 2 billion new dimensions and you're currently looking at the Asuma dimension. This one was actually created using my name as the seed. So if you didn't catch it and you want to know all the ins and outs about this snapshot, then check out the link in the description box to snapshot 20w14 infinity. Now of course all of the features and changes in that snapshot were a joke so they're not a part of this one which is 20w14a and in this one you can see behind me we have a brand new mob to check out. But first of all wanted to quickly mention this snapshot updates the panoramic view of the main menu you can see the free biomes that have been added are featured in this one it's a really nice shot and this is something that they do with every major update and it's this snapshot that it gets added so let's get to this new mob that has been added here is the piglin and you've probably seen it when it comes into the overworld for a portal it will end up turning into a zomblified piglin now this zoglin which is the new mob no surprise is what happens when a hoglin finds its way into the overworld there we go, it turns into a Zoglin and immediately it starts attacking other mobs. Let's spawn in a couple more and you'll see that they'll just attack anything in sight. Now they're very strong so they appear to have won the battle here. Notice that they don't attack each other. Anyway, here's the funny thing. The mob that gets the better of them is the squid. So I'm going to summon in its arch nemesis, the squid, and they're going to go after this mob. But you'll see that they can't actually swim and that they sink downwards and uh, eventually they're going to drown. Well, it looks to me like the squid has won this encounter with the Zoglin. There isn't too much else to say about this mob. It generally has the same attributes. It can't be bred with the Crimson Fungus though. There's no breeding of this mob. And also it isn't repelled by Warped Fungus. So you can't use this to manipulate where it's going to go. Now there doesn't seem to be any interactivity between the baby zombified piglins and the zoglins. As you can see they're aggressive towards them. And going back to the old thing about them being aggressive. Yeah it looks like they're literally aggressive to any other creature inside of the game. However Mojang have used their noggin here. They're not aggressive towards creepers which makes sense because then they could cause some unexpected explosions in your world which no one is looking for. Okay, they actually attacked this ghast a second ago. Yep, look, that's kind of amusing. Looks like they go after the strider mob as well, which is what we're going to be talking about next. I gotta say, I like these changes. As you can see, we're moving, whoa, really quite fast. And Mojang have changed the speed of traveling on the strider, so it's more like traveling on a boat. And that actually feels really effective. Also, I love the little animation it makes with its legs. Oh, so cute. Now there is one other minor change here, and that is that the Warped Fungus on a stick now has a durability of 100. Basically meaning that it's going to last a lot longer than before. And there is an ability to boost the speed of the Strider. If you right click on it with the warp Fungus on a stick, you can give it a kind of boost that uses some of the durability. But now you can see we are moving even faster. The statistics menu is now listed alphabetically. If you've seen Tango and Efo's stat poker, well, this will make playing that game a little bit easier. There have been a bunch of technical changes in this snapshot too, and some updates to how the lodestone works. However, it seems that these changes have brought about some bugs. If we look in the hotbar down here, you can see that none of these compasses really know where they're pointing to. And that should be the proper behavior for a regular compass, but a lodestone compass should be pointing to this right here. And you can see that for some reason it's manipulating the behavior of the other compasses, which is really strange. But there is also now support for item frames. If they've got a compass in it linked to a lodestone, then it's actually going to point at that lodestone, which is a way to manipulate how they look in item frames. If you put one directly on top like this though, it just sort of points to the side. I thought it'd be cool if it's spun around and also let's go ahead and break this lodestone because that will then confuse the one that I'm holding in my hand at least 
and you can see that rather than spinning like crazy it has a slower animation now but as for the ones in the item frames it looks like they're still stuck pointing to where they thought it was another change they've made as well is for the ability for compasses to have enchantments added to them well actually for now just the curse of vanishing so you can put that on a compass and there are a couple of other details with this but since it appears to all not be working properly i think i'm just going to skip over it for now now here on the website it says region files are now opened in synchronous mode to increase reliability now region files are where all of the blocks of your world are stored and if your game has ever crashed and you've lost a bunch of progress in the world because of that well it might be related to this issue so hopefully in the future we'll see less of those hard crashes and if you run a server and you want to keep the region files loading like normal, you can actually change this inside of your server.properties file. Now also here on the website it says attributes are now added to game registry similar to items, sounds and events. Now I won't lie, I'm not entirely sure what that means, but if you are a map maker, someone who tinkers around with the inner workings of the game, there are some renames here that you should check out so you can update your maps and commands. Now let's get to the bugs. If you've ever been to an end city and found that the loot chests are broken, the items are on the floor, or worst of all, the items aren't even there, this is a known bug that has been squashed in this update. The same thing can also happen in an igloo, and again, we shouldn't see this happen anymore. Now here is a rather large list of sounds that weren't supported by subtitles. This list was put together by Sonic Wave and submitted to Mojang. So if you use subtitles, there should be even more detail available with them in this snapshot and update of Minecraft. It's also been reported that the Buffett world type wasn't working with the new nether biomes. So let's go and select warped forest and go for floating islands. Well, maybe that one hasn't actually been fixed after all. It crashes every time I try to make this world. We are now in last week's snapshot to show you a problem with colliding with lava. Can you see what it is? Yeah, look at that. So the game is treating it like colliding with the whole space of the block when there's lava in it is being in contact with the lava. Look at that. In this snapshot, things are working a little better. Let's press shift and go down a level. Yeah, and look at that, we actually have to make contact with the lava to get set on fire. That's a cool little change. There is also a report that an observer wouldn't detect the change in a fence post when it connects to a tree that's newly grown, and you can see that one's been fixed. Now here in the end we have shulkers, and if you've played Survival Minecraft, then you'll know that the shulkers can shoot projectiles at you. And these projectiles will now be able to interact with chorus flowers, being able to pop them off. They can ring bells if they are set on fire, the projectile. They can light a campfire that's unlit and they can also activate the target block. And there is also a bug fix for something that I really don't know how to do, but Impulse showed me how to do it on Hermitcraft. There's like some crazy trickery where you throw down a bunch of pistons and TNT and you can actually remove the bedrock and there are some bug fixes that might retain to this I'm not entirely sure so be sure to look out for what the technical crowd are making of this snapshot and speaking of Hermitcraft I actually uploaded a video of it earlier today I didn't think they'd be putting out a snapshot after April Fool's ones so if you haven't seen the Hermitcraft episode if you haven't seen the April Fool's video go and check them out links are in the description box down below but that's it from me this snapshot thank you for watching and I'll see you soon bye bye